Okay, so second part of this uh, lecture is all about Node.js, which is really what we call server-side JavaScript, or to make it a bit more appropriate, we do actually browser-less JavaScript. So we run JavaScript files outside of the browser. Now, <clears throat> what we know so far is mainly over here and sort of this connection here. So we have seen how to send requests to a server, and of course, the most basic way of doing that is just requesting a URL. So every time you open a website or you click a link in the internet, you send an HTTP request somewhere. Uh, the other thing we have done is we have used JavaScript to send AJAX requests. So from our code, we have set an H sent an HTTP request to the server and gotten a response while the HTML file was loaded. So we could request things without reloading basically. Then we have produced content and structure in our HTML code. We have made it pretty, hopefully, using CSS. And finally, we have executed JavaScript, but only in the browser so far. Uh, and what we do now is we go away from that, we move to the server and we still want to execute functionality. Uh, we'll still do that with JavaScript, but you can do a whole a lot of different things here. Um, and as sort of the arrows indicate here, servers are not just execute a functionality, but a lot of that has to do with, with accepting handling requests and sending appropriate responses. And it doesn't always have to be to a client. It can also be another server that requests something. So that's very common. Now we directly jump into Node.js. Um, what is <coughs> Node.js all about? Node.js is a JavaScript script runtime, um, which is built on the V8, JavaScript engine that runs, for example, in Chrome. Uh, and it's just like a runtime environment. So every browser contains some kind of runtime environment. And in a way, it's similar. So it's very similar as well to uh, other runtime environments for programming languages. For instance, when you run Python scripts, you go into your terminal, into your console, and you type Python and then you have a program. So it's very similar to that. Uh, it's quite different from what we have done with JavaScript so far. So, so far what we have done is you write a JavaScript file, you have an HTML file that somehow includes it, uh, and you open that HTML file. And the browser then goes through your HTML, it finds the, the script tag that includes the JavaScript, and it executes the JavaScript using the browser's engine. Um, and the problem with that is it means that JavaScript can only be executed in a browser on the client side. So you have to have this browser, you have to have this HTML file. Um, and that's not very, uh, that's a very specific use case. Let's put it like that. It's only for websites. Um, what we would like to do instead is run JavaScript files in our command line in the terminal. Um, <clears throat> So what you can actually do using Node.js is you build command line tools. You can run it uh, in your terminal. And that also enables us to run it uh, on a server, which we then call server-side JavaScript. So <clears throat> we'll jump right in. Uh, and then later we discuss a bit more the, the implications of doing that maybe. Uh, but the most basic thing, so first you have to install Node.js and if you have no idea how to do that, then I would just recommend going uh, to the link. So you just go through the to the Node.js website um, and the Node.js website directly actually points you to download. Here it shows macOS because that's what I'm running. Uh, but there is documentation, uh, how to use it, how to install it for the different operating systems. And it should not be too difficult. The important thing is once you have installed it uh, in your console, you can type Node. Uh, and it actually does something. So something happens. Um, and usually if you type node version, it shows you what kind of version you have installed. Uh, you don't have to have the same version as me, just in case you're wondering. Uh, I probably should update it again, but that's not the most important thing. So for the kinds of applications we write, the versions should not make a big difference. Now, what we'll do is we'll just continue as we did so far. We write the JavaScript file, hello node, the classical uh, hello world. Uh, it's just a console log. There's nothing new here. You should know this definitely. And we just save it in a regular JavaScript file. So as we have done so far, 
The only thing we'll do then instead of going into a browser and including our JavaScript file is we just run it in the console. We just say node app.js. Um, now let's see whether I actually have something like that. Yes. So I have console log hello.node. And the classical way here is just to have an HTML file that includes it. Um, so that's what we have done so far. Uh, and if I show you that, of course, there should not be any surprise, hopefully, at this point in time. Um, so if I just run my app.html and I look into the console, you see hello node. So it's just a regular JavaScript file. Um, but if I then go into the console and I run it, uh, I'll just get the output here. So this is, of course, now much more what you're used to in programming, what you have done before. So <clears throat> that's a good thing. Now, the, what we have done so far in JavaScript had, uh, we wrote a bunch of functions, but quite often we did stuff with the HTML file. We added elements, we read input fields or so on. And if you don't have an HTML file, that doesn't make much sense. So the question is, what can Node.js do and what can it not do? The first thing, as I said, there is no HTML file. So there is no DOM, there is no document, uh, there are no HTML events. So all of that does not make sense anymore. And if you write something like document.getElementById, Node will complain that it doesn't know the document element, it doesn't exist. Instead, Node has a number of modules, a number of additions uh, that are missing in, in regular JavaScript. So for instance, in regular, client-side JavaScript, you cannot read or write files uh, from or to the hard drive. Uh, and that's simply a security thing because you load JavaScript files from the internet, you don't want them to write stuff on your computer. Uh, so you cannot do that. Uh, you cannot access a database. You cannot write a server, but all of that is regular stuff you want to do in a, in a server-side setting. So all of these things are added in Node.js. So suddenly you can read files, you can access the database like a MySQL database or a MongoDB database, uh, and you can write an HTTP server. So you can actually handle HTTP requests. Uh, and most of these things we couldn't do in client-side JavaScript, and they also might not make sense. Um, but everything we have done so far in this specific lecture, in lecture 14, the this keyword, arrow functions, modules, can also be executed using Node.js, uh, even though this is, is a slightly different story in, in Node.js. Um, Node.js comes with a bunch of standard modules that are inbuilt. So there is one module called HTTP, which you can use for handling and for actually sending HTTP requests. There is FS, which is a module that you can use for what's called, it stands for file system. So you can use that to read or write files from the disk. Uh, there is a crypto module, cryptography, encryption. Uh, there is an assert module, which you can use for assertions, for example, in testing. So these are kind of standard things. Um, and if you want to use any of that, you just use the require statement. So for example, you just define a variable, my HTTP, require HTTP, which means please import the HTTP module. Uh, and then you can use it. You can do myhttp.get to make a GET request, to send a GET request somewhere else. So that's very similar to what we did before with Axios, for example. <clears throat> and of course, you can write your own modules. Uh, that's why I've covered it in the beginning. You can actually use the regular module pattern use, using an IIFE. Um, but Node.js has, has a module mechanism. It has introduced some specific uh, keywords, some code, and make it very easy to write modules because that's a common thing. So the way this works, uh, remember, I have my SSID, I have the log function, I have the get function. Uh, and now instead of all the fuss with putting brackets around it and returning the right stuff, all I do is I say module.exports. Get, it, I get SSID. So I say, please export this as a part of a module. Uh, and then I put it in a JavaScript file. And now if I'm in another file and I want to use this, all I have to do is I use the require statement. So I say, please load the my module file. Uh, note that I'm leaving the JS away here. So it just means that if the JavaScript file is in the same directory, dot slash means it's the same folder. Uh, please load this. And then I can just use this function. 
Uh, I cannot use the other things. So by default, these are not accessible in Node, but everything that I have exported, module.export, is accessible using just the my module get SSID. So this is much, much easier. Um, and the require statement here, as you, as you might have noticed, it's exactly the same I stated here for these kind of general built-in modules. So whether you write your own module or you use an existing one, doesn't matter. The difference is uh, that I just write HTTP here. So it's just kind of a global name. Whereas here I write, I point to a file. Um, and then only get SSID is available. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. Um, I have also, so this is all the code I'll upload for this lecture. The, there is all the example code for the first part, for example, on arrow functions. Uh, so you can test that. Um, but I have, for example, also built uh, the module. So here is exactly the code for the, for the node module. I have my SSID, I have the log function, I have the get SSID and uh, I just do module.exports. Um, and this is Node.js syntax, this won't work in a browser. And then if I'm in another JavaScript file, I can just include it and run it. So we can test that. Uh, if, I use, if I use Node to run this module user, then this file will load my module.js and it will execute the get SSID function. So you see that it actually prints the SSID. Uh, we can also test, just to see that, that the other things are not available. So if I try to directly access SSID, for example, uh, so that's the variable name here. If I try to do that, uh, hopefully it doesn't work. Yeah, so you see it says undefined. I don't have access to the variable. So that's exactly what I want. The other thing that's important at this point is that uh, the module.export statement here and the require statement, these are node specific syntax. So if I try now to write an HTML file that includes something that is node.js syntax, uh, it will not work. So we have seen that some things don't make sense to run uh, in node.js if it's anything to do with HTML. The other way around that of course also happens if I have JavaScript files that include specific Node.js syntax. So here we see reference error require is not defined. Uh, so the browser does not know how to deal with this statement here, plain and simple. And the same would be the case for the module.exports. So even though both is JavaScript, there are slight differences in the syntax and that's an important thing to, to learn. <coughs> that will cause some problems in the beginning, but you will figure that out quickly. Now, uh, this is cool. We can run some, some, H, uh, some JavaScript code. We can write our own modules, but let's actually start with the kind of things we want to use uh, Node.js for. And the most basic thing is an HTTP server. So we want to have something that uh, actually responds to HTTP requests. Uh, what we can use, we can use the inbuilt HTTP module. So we can just say require HTTP. Um, there is one interesting thing I'm doing here. I'm using the const keyword. I haven't done that yet, but that basically defines a constant variable that is not changing. So it's like, again, like in many programming languages, you can say this thing is constant. This shouldn't be changed. Um, what I'm doing here is I import the HTTP module. I define where it should run. And now this is running on localhost. It's my own machine. So I just say, please just listen to my own input, sort of the own machine on port 3000. And that's just a random port I've chosen. Uh, typically everything over 1024 is open. So you can just decide which number you think fits. Uh, what I then do is I create a server and HTTP has a specific method for that. So I just say create server. Um, and I just uh, say, What's in here is a callback function, and this callback function is just whatever is being called when there is a request coming. So my server here says whenever there's a request, uh, send status code 200, set the content type to text, so I'm sending text back, uh, and 
this is what I'm sending back. Welcome to my Node.js HTTP server. Uh, so basically this callback function just handles all the requests. And you have two parameters. You have the request parameter that contains all the details like which method, which uh, body content, like what is being sent, what are the headers. So you can read all of those things. Uh, and the response is what I'm sending back. So you see here that I'm actually changing the HTTP response object. I say the return status code is 200. Uh, and after I've done that, I have my server object. I just start it. I say, okay, please listen. Please listen to any kind of request that comes in on port 3000 on localhost. Uh, and once the server is started, I just again have a callback function. I just print server is running. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, let's try this. The important thing is this listen statement here is blocking. So once this thing runs, uh, the server just runs, it doesn't stop. And that's how we want it to be because the server should always listen what's, what's going on and whenever there's a request coming, it should answer it. Um, so let's see where I have saved it, probably in HTTP server. Yeah, so that's exactly the code. So all I do is note HTTP server. Uh, and you see now, this is the, the server running output. So we're here. Uh, and you also see that uh, I'm not getting back to the regular console. So this is just a blocking command. Now the server is running and is listening. Uh, and if I now go into Firefox and I just type 127.0.0.1 or localhost, exactly the same. Uh, and then I need to do Cologne 3000. So that's the port. If I do that, I'll exactly get welcome to my Node.js HTTP server. So I'm just getting this text back. Um, that's all it is. So that's already nice. I have written a server. Uh, we can finally do something. I could run this code on a different computer. So now I'm running it on my own computer and I'm accessing it from my own computer. That's a bit boring. Uh, but later on, we could use the same code and deploy it somewhere on the cloud. And then it's really on the internet, it's accessible. So this is just for making it easier to demonstrate this, but the same code would work if it runs on the internet with minor modifications. The problem here is this server doesn't do a lot. Uh, because it answers whatever you send it always answers the same thing so whatever request you send is just answered with 200 welcome to my node server that's not very practical um, what is used very commonly is to use uh, an additional framework to do these things um, and in this course we'll use the express module the express framework um, which is just a kind of a collection of libraries that makes it very easy to write these kind of servers. Um, because if I would like to do this in a better way, I would actually have to have a lot of if statements here that read the, re the request. For example, if the request is a post request, do something. If it's a get request, do something else. Uh, if it's a get request to a certain URL, do something. If it's a get request to another URL, do something else. So we would just get a long list of, of if and if else statements here. Um, and there are just libraries that make this look nicer. So Express is one of them. That's, the, that's one of the only frameworks we'll use in this course. Now the interesting thing with Express is it's an external module. It's nothing that is ex included in Node. So these are kind of the things that Node comes with, they're inbuilt. Uh, Express is not one of those. It's sort of an external thing. And that's the other reason why we use it to show you what you can do, how you can include other external modules that you haven't written yourself. Now, in client-side JavaScript, we also did this. For example, we had Axios, so we had to do a script tag and we just pointed it to some JavaScript file on the internet. And if we did this, then we could use the Axios functionality. Uh, we don't have tags in Node, so we cannot do that. Instead, there is package management. So there is a tool that comes installed with Node.js, which is called NPM, Node Package Manager. And this one makes it extremely easy to install dependencies, install external libraries. Um, so for example, if you want to use Axios in Node, 
we just type npm install Axios. Um, npm installed and just checks what is needed. Uh, maybe Axios needs some other packages and so on. Uh, so it, it installs a ton of modules um, and then you can just include it afterwards. So let's see whether I have this here. So I have a script called axios.js, if I just show you that. Um, I'll show it to you in VS Code, it's easier to read. So all I'm doing is I require axios and then I can do axios.get. I'll just do a get request. Now, if I run this, it will throw an error, it complains, it says cannot find module Axios. And that's because I haven't installed it. So it doesn't know, it's not inbuilt in Node, it doesn't know where it is, so first I have to install it. And that's where I do npm install Axios. Uh, and now a lot of things will happen. Uh, certain things are fine, there are some warnings, uh, but it actually looks like it worked. So in installed Axios, uh, and if I now run the code again, there is an error because I cannot connect to localhost, but it has actually worked. It has done something. It has executed this line. So now it knows what Axios is. It can do a GET request. Um, maybe if I run my server at the same time, this will actually work. Let's try. So now I have something. Now if I do Axios.js again, then everything works. Uh, it doesn't do anything, but apparently the GET request goes through. There is no error. So this is what we do with npm install. It's a very useful tool uh, because it just does everything automatic. <clears throat> and we'll now uh, do that to write uh, a small HTTP server that actually does different things. Uh, we'll put all of these things together. So what we want to do is we want to run express. That's a framework. Uh, and what we need to do for that is first install it. So we just do npm install express. And I think it's just express, but I have to look that up. At least something happens. And express has been added. So now I've installed express and I can use it in my code. Uh, and here is the code I'm writing now. It looks different from before. I still have my host name and I have my port. Uh, and I still have this listen statement that is very similar to what I had before. This just starts my code. Um, but I have some additional things. So I include the express module, say so please use express.js, uh, and then I have to start it. So that's just how this framework works. I have to initialize it. I have to say please run express. Uh, and whatever is returned, I put into app. Uh, this is just the way Express works. You just have to look into the documentation how it works. The good thing is now, uh, down here I start my server, but now I have two lines here. And what you see, what they do is uh, they handle different kinds of requests. So the first one only handles a GET request. So if, if anything else comes, if a POST request comes, this is just ignored. Uh, and it only handles a GET request that goes to slash, so that goes to our root URL. Um, and then the code is, is pretty much as before. We just have the response and we uh, set the status to 200. We send hello world back. That's all we do. And the next one here only handles a POST request and it only handles it to slash test. So all the other URLs are ignored. Uh, and we do again the same, we just return 200, uh, slightly different text, but that's all we do. So now, uh, instead of having all these ridiculous if and else statements, I just have these app.get.post.delete, and I can just put them under each other, uh, and I can handle different kinds of requests to different kinds of URLs. Um, and I'll just show you that. So I have my express HTTP server here. That's precisely the code from the slides. Uh, and I'll just execute that. So let's just do note express HTTP server. Uh, if I have installed express properly, then this should just run. Yeah, and it says express app listening, blah, blah, blah. It again blocks our server is running. Uh, 
Now there's two things I can do. I can run the get request to slash. Let's start with that. And that's again the same thing. I just go to localhost 3000 and I do slash, uh, but that's implicit. So I, the slash I can leave away if nothing else comes. So if I just do like that, you see that I get hello world. If I do dot slash, uh, it will give me exactly the same. So there's no difference. Now to test the post request, I'll probably use postman. Uh, it's the easiest. <coughs> I'll just create a new uh, request. Set add request, post express. Yeah, let's get rid of the update. So, and I want to do a post request. The post request goes to localhost 3000. Um, and if we look into the code, you'll see I should only answer to slash test. So if I do anything else, if I do slash and I send, this should not work. So it says 404 not found, error cannot post, didn't work. If I instead do slash test, then I get test post 200 back. Uh, so I get exactly this as a return value. So this is now very practical because I have basically uh, in my code, in few lines, I have defined exactly which requests I'm replying to in what way, uh, and I have nicely separated that. So I don't have any messy if else statements. So that's the the advantage of using something like Express frameworks that make your life easier. Express can do a whole lot of other things that we might not see in this course, but uh, this is definitely already a good start. What I'm doing here is called routing. Uh, it's a very common concept in, in HTTP servers, but also in, in, for example, front end frameworks that you say, if a certain URL is called with a certain method, then run this code. If something else is done, please run this code and so on. So I just route the requests to, to a different portion of my application. Okay, so that's what I've done. Um, now there is some more stuff I want to do, which has to do with, with all of this NPM install. So I've installed Axios, I have installed Express, uh, and because I have done that, I can run my Express server. Um, the problem is I have installed this locally. So it's just in my folder here. Uh, I haven't displayed this, but when I did NPM install, what happened is that this folder called node modules was created. Uh, and in this folder, there are all the dependencies. So if we look into here, there will be a lot of stuff. Uh, but one of the things you see is Axios, and the other thing you see is Express. So those are the two things are I installed. All the other stuff are dependencies. So Express, for example, needs to have something called body parser, uh, and other things. So that those are just other packages that are needed. But the problem is now, if I want to share my code, so I want to give this express HTTP server to someone else, it will not work. So what we can do just to, this, to show this, is I just copy this file somewhere else, for example, in the folder above, um, and I just try to run it there. And then you see that we get an error, it says cannot find module express. So our application doesn't run because I haven't installed the right things. Um, and that's a bit of a problem because usually we want to be able to, to exchange our code. We want to give it to someone else to run or we want to ex install it in a different directory or on a different computer. Um, and we need to have all the dependencies. And of course, what I could do is I could just send an email to the person that wants to install this server and say, okay, you need to do npm install express, for example, then it will work. Uh, the better way of doing that is usually, and that's, there are a thousand different ways. In npm, there's a specific way to say we share uh, the information. So we share software with other people and we define what is needed for that. Uh, so what we have done so far is we have just done npm install express, 
which means it just installs the stuff in our current folder. So it creates this node modules and puts everything in there. You can do something as npm minus g that installs it globally. So it installs it everywhere on your computer. Um, but that still doesn't help us if we want to run it on a different computer. So finally, uh, what we can do and what we will do now and for the remainder of the course is we define an npm project. So we define exactly which modules are needed uh, for this software to run. And the way we do this um, is to call, well, there are different ways, but the easiest one is to just call npm init. So let's do that. We just make a new folder, express l14. Uh, and I just want to say here, I want to create a new NPM, a new node project. I do NPM in it. Uh, and now I get a lot of questions. I get, okay, what's the package name? Uh, if I press enter, it will just use this, the suggestion here. That's just a folder name. Let's do that. Version one, one, I can do a description, a basic express server. Uh, entry point, what, what is sort of the starting file? Uh, let's do index.js test command, we don't do anything, git repository, we don't have, I can add keywords, express L14, uh, author, I can add, it's just some information, you can have a license, is that okay, yes. Uh, and what has happened now, if we look into the folder, it has created a single file, package.json. Um, and that file just contains First of all, it's a JSON file, so it's JSON format. You should recognize that. Uh, it just contains all the information that I have just been asked. Sort of, what's the name of the project? What is the version? What is the, the main file? Uh, what is the test command? Most of this stuff is, is not really needed. We don't care. Uh, and so far, there is nothing in here that is essential, um, but we'll get there now. The interesting thing is now in this package.json file, we can also save information on which modules, which dependencies are needed. Um, and all we do is instead of running npm install module name, we just do npm install minus minus save. Uh, and what it does then, it installs the module just like before, but it also saves the dependency in the package.json file. So it adds the information that this is something that needs to be installed. Um, so I can show this. If I now do npm install express and I add the save command, um, then it looks fairly similar to before. If we look at this, you see that the node modules folder is there. In the node modules folder, there is our express. So it has been installed. That's good. But the other, the really relevant thing is uh, if we look at the package.json file, you see now this part here. So there has been a line added that says the dependencies for this project are express version 4.17.1 or higher. Uh, so now we have actually information on what is needed. Um, and now let's say we, we add some other stuff. Uh, we don't really need this, but for example, let's say we also want to have body parser, uh, we also wanted to use Axios. So I just add some modules. Then you see that all of these things are added here. Um, and now let's just copy my file from before. Express HTTP server. I'll just copy it here as index.js. Um, so now I have it here. And I can run this, of course. I can run node index. <coughs> Then we just have our express app as before. But now the important thing is if I wanted to give this code to someone else, if I want to install it somewhere else, um, I just can give that person the JavaScript file and the package.json. So that's all the information they need. Uh, if we try that now, index.js and package.json, uh, and I want to install the app somewhere else, for example, in temp. I give these two files to someone else. Uh, and that person now can go there. And if they try to run index.js, it won't work. 
it shouldn't work. Probably I have done something wrong. I have probably installed Express globally. Um, bad example. <laughs> but if they want to do, uh, if they want to install all the dependencies, all they need to do is uh, npm install. And now what npm install does is it reads the package.json file and it create it downloads everything uh, that is needed. So now you see that because I've done npm install, we have node modules and we actually have all the things we have defined. Axios, body parser, uh, and express have been installed automatically. And now it works. Uh, now this was a bit lame because it already worked before. So let's try that somewhere else. For example, I'm pretty sure that here this should not work. Express. So if I do node index, yeah, now we have a problem. We have not installed express. Uh, but now instead of telling the person you have to do install express, you have to install Axios, blah, blah, blah. You just run npm install uh, and it will just look up the package.json file. And now after you've done that, you can run the server. No problem. Uh, so that's now, uh, this package.json file is now the key to make our code exchangeable. We can give it to someone else. That person can just run npm install and everything that is needed will be installed automatically. So you can just run the code wherever you want. Uh, and that's an important thing to package management uh, that makes it easier to move code to a different location, to uh, a different computer, to a different folder. <clears throat> so that's what we've done. We have saved all our dependencies in the package.json file. We just ran npm install and this install command just looks into the file and installs everything. Uh, and that's really what uh, what an npm project is about. It's basically this package.json file uh, and everything else is just installed automatically. So the node modules, that's the folder where, where all the modules are installed for this project. Uh, the package.json contains the actual project information. It contains all the dependencies. Uh, and the package.lock is actually just something used by, by Node.js to calculate dependencies. This can be deleted every time you run npm install it. It's just create from, created from scratch. Uh, one important thing is uh, if you share your project or if you submit an assignment in, in the case of this course, the node modules folder and the package log file you should exclude. Uh, so those things do not submit them, especially the node modules folder takes a lot of uh, space. So we don't need them. We only need the package.json because there is all the information on what needs to be installed. Uh, and of course we need to have the JavaScript files. Otherwise it doesn't make sense. Uh, so just to, to show you this, in this example, the node modules folder uh, it's not too large, but still it has two megabytes uh, and it has 454 files. Uh, and if you have more dependencies, this thing very quickly gets very large. So it's not a good idea to share this when you upload your project somewhere. Okay, so those are NPM projects and we'll use them a lot. Um, now I'll, I'll round up this introduction to Node with a, a pointer to something that is called, called Learn You Node or Workshopper, uh, because my slides don't have a lot of examples on Node.js. It's just a quick introduction. I will do some more in the live session, but uh, if you just want to use the slides to solve the, the assignments, this will probably not be possible. So the idea is if you want to practice, use tools like Learn You Node. Uh, Learn Your Node is a learning environment that is actually written in Node.js. Uh, you can you can use this to write uh, basically tutorials for different tasks, programming tasks, uh, web design tasks. In this case, ironically, it's a Node.js application that is written to teach you Node.js. Um, 
look at the literature reference number four for, for any installation instructions, but you can just install this using NPM. So it's very practical. Uh, the good thing about it is it asks you to do something, but you can automatically check your solution. So there's an inbuilt tool that checks what you have produced. Uh, of course, this is not meant to just let you do your stuff on your own and I don't care. Uh, you are, of course, welcome to ask questions uh, on Piazza anyway, and please go to the labs. So this is just if you want to practice. Uh, I'll just show you this. So I have actually installed uh, Node.js, uh, learn your node. I have installed that globally. So there is nothing uh, special there, but it's just a npm install g learn you note. So it's just a, a global installation. Uh, I have done that, and once you have done that, you'll get this uh, learn you note command, and you just run it. Uh, and it looks like this good old uh, console application, but it has basically different tasks. So it goes from basic to more advanced. So if you go to the very basic one, it says, please write a program that prints hello world to the console. Uh, and then there are always some hints how to do that. So this is very basic. So it starts with to make a Node.js program, create a new file, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this is how you log text to the console. And if you're done, you can run learn your node verify to actually check that the solution is correct. Uh, and you can look at these instructions every time you want. And that's really how it works. So if I want to do, for example, input output, something I haven't covered, uh, I could just go in here and it says write a program that synchronously reads a file and prints number of new lines to the console or something like that. Uh, and then there are some hints on how to do that. So you might want to use the FS module, uh, you might want to use this. So it's, it's, fairly, uh, it's fairly good to give you a hint how to do that uh, and you can just do that. So that's uh, a recommendation if you want to practice Node, if you want to get used to some basic uh, Node.js stuff. Okay, so this is where we'll stop lecture 14. Uh, lecture 15 then, as discussed, will be a theoretical one where we all we do is we discuss the representational state transfer or REST architectural style. So it's one style of how to program web services. Uh, it's extremely common in the web, so you will be used to a lot of the uh, things that are in REST already, because that's just how a lot of the internet is set up. It's a purely theoretical lecture. There's no coding going to be involved. Uh, that will follow them in lecture 16. Thanks for watching.